Hello everyone, Duox here, and this is going to be part two of the video series. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use SSH to set up a tunnel, and this tunnel will take all of the web traffic from Google Chrome, send it over the internet to a different device, and then it will go out from that device and go out to the website that you're looking to go to. This is a proxy, and it's going to use SSH tunneling with socks. So the first step is we have the private, uh, previous video, the PuTTY connection that we set up. I already have my PuTTY connection logged in right here. And so that's the first step. Second step we're gonna need is we're gonna go back to PuTTY. We're gonna go to PuTTY configuration. This is the where it gets really a little bit more complicated than previous video. You're gonna load up a previous save session. Then you're gonna go over under here this will be closed like this. You're gonna go connections, SSH, hit the plus there. We're gonna go to tunnels, and here's a lot of options that threw me off at first. Actually, all we need to do is to type in source port, and we need to set to dynamic, that's socks. For source port, just use any old port that's probably not the same one you used for, Arch, uh, for the, um, for the tunneling on the, the original port for the SSH connection, excuse me. So I'm going to type in 39900, because I'm not using that port right now, and hit add. When you save your connection up here, you hit save again, because you'll need to. When you hit save, you will have a local tunnel on your computer, and you can put all the web traffic from Google Chrome using the extension through that port. So I'm going to go over to Google Chrome and show you how that works. Over here on this right side, you'll see a app I downloaded called Tunnel Switch. I'll show you how to get Tunnel Switch. Quick Google search shows that it's right in the Google Chrome store. And you can add it to Chrome right here. Once you have it downloaded, we can go over to the side, right click and go to options. Over here is where we will have to configure the proxy. Now there's three different options. Direct, which has no proxy, so we don't really want that. That does nothing. Pack file, which is a bit high level for me. I'll figure out eventually, but for the time being, I'm simply forwarding all traffic through this fixed server. So in order to edit the fixed server option, you can hit the pencil button. Go down to the bottom here, fixed server, make sure the radial button's clicked. Set the host to 127. 001, that is the local computer. Because this port is open on the local computer, that's the part of the tunnel. It goes in our computer, 39900, goes through SSH to the other computer at 399, like 21, whatever I've set at, goes through the firewall to that computer on the other side of the firewall, our server, and then back out to the internet. And so that's how this kind of works. So once you have your random port that you set previously, the same one in PuTTY, and make sure that's that one. The host is good, color doesn't matter, and hit update. One thing I forgot to mention in the first take of this video is that one, PuTTY needs to be running after you've set the tunnel uh, setting. It needs PuTTY needs to be restarted and PuTTY needs to be running in the background while you're doing your web traffic on Google Chrome in order for the tunnel to work. If PuTTY is not running in the background and connected, your tunnel will fail and it will just say no connection. So make sure that you have PuTTY running in the background. Also, too, you can get a shortcut on your desktop for PuTTY, but not only that, to make it easier on yourself, you can add a bit of uh, flags on the end of the target and when you right click the shortcut properties, you can type in dash load, quotation mark, the name of your settings, the name of your profile, and close the quotation marks. Once you've done that and you hit OK and you double click it, given that you already have a key, which is another thing entirely, it would probably ask you for your password. Given all that, you are directly logged in and if I went to Google Chrome and then I hit Chrome and I hit turn on the switch right here, the video, the uh, tunnel will actually be working. Okay, back to the original recording. I've already done this. And then you will click this button right here, just one click, and when it turns red or whatever color it is over here on the left, that's how you know the tunnel is active. And when you do that, and you go to say, 
ipleak.net, which I'm not going to do because I don't want to show my IP address, you can see whether your IP address is actually the one of your host computer, of the client computer I should say, or is it of the server computer. If it's of the server computer, you did the job right. So actually it's not that complicated once you have this figured out. It just took me some while to figure it out. Hope this guide, hope this guide helps you out. Uh, thank you for watching. If you have any comments or feedback, be sure to give it to me in the comments. Like and subscribe, and I will see you in part three for Shadow Socks, which is even more involved, but a not too difficult process. Thank you.